you're listening to the Telltale channel. Don't forget to check me out on all social media, Patreon, Twitter, Teespring, and Etsy. All links can be found in the description or on my website, telltaleatheist.com. Hey Owen, uh, this is Alma. I have a question. Um, when I left the Jehovah's Witness, uh, they used to say that the people who was born in 1914 was the generation that will not pass, meaning that uh, we will get the Armageddon before they will die. So if that is true, either those people are 106 years old or um, they changed again to something else. Uh, I don't know if you know what is it now that they are saying about it. Okay, thank you. That is a good question. I appreciate you asking that question. So basically, uh, the question is, what's the deal with Jehovah's Witnesses, second generation teaching, and 1914 and all that other stuff? It's actually very confusing, so... Let's see if we can work our way through the belief system. Basically, Jehovah's Witnesses have this belief that in 1914, Jesus came back invisibly to earth. So a lot of Christians are waiting for Jesus to come back right now. They believe he came back invisibly and started the war, blah, 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 right? For many years, Jehovah's Witnesses released books that would say things like, millions now living will never die. They've been saying... We're in the end times, and millions of people aren't going to ever die. They're just going to live straight through and make it into the paradise earth. So what happened? Do they still say that? That is a truth claim. What they're saying is either true or it's not true, right? Here's the basic theology behind it. There's this dream that Daniel had I'm sorry, there's a dream that Nebuchadnezzar had in the book of Daniel, right? And he calls Daniel in to interpret the dream for him because he didn't understand it and he knew Daniel was a godly man, blah, blah, blah. The dream was basically about Nebuchadnezzar um, wandering the fields like a beast for seven times. Now, Daniel gave an interpretation of that dream in the book of Daniel, but Jehovah's Witnesses give an extra reading on top of that into the prophecy, saying that it means something beyond what Daniel said it meant in the book. So Jehovah's Witnesses try to figure out what a time is. Now in Revelation, it says a time is a year, basically. So 365 days. So at this point, what we're working with is a verse from the book of Daniel, and a verse from the book of Revelation. That's two different parts of the Bible, two completely separate, distinct parts of the Bible that Jehovah's Witnesses are kind of smashing together, right? They started counting this amount of time, seven times, whatever a time is, from the fall of Jerusalem. But nothing happened. If you calculate, I think it says seven times, if you calculate that out, it's like, 2,520 days or something like that, 365 days times seven times is 2,520. Nothing happened at that point in time. So they took another verse from another book in the Bible, Numbers, is talking about something completely unrelated, and it says a day for a year. So they started out with 2,520 days, and they take this random verse from this random book in the Bible, completely unconnected to anything else, and they, they calculate it out 2,520 years. If all of this sounds confusing and nonsensical, that's because it is. It is confusing and nonsensical. There is no logic connected to this whatsoever. It's old Bible math made up in the 1800s by some group called the Millerites and Jehovah's Witnesses latched onto it and absolutely loved it and tweaked it to fit what they wanted it to fit. And here we are today. So they start counting their 2,520 years from the fall of Jerusalem, which at the time when this was calculated back in the early 1900s, we thought was 607 BCE. That was what everybody thought. That's what archaeologists thought and everything else. 
Come to find out, that's not actually when Jerusalem fell. As if we have a good reason to start from that point anyways. As if we have a good reason to use the, the number 2,520 years. After cramming three different verses from three different books of the Bible together and reading them side by side to basically make up an entirely new book of the Bible. Like, it's complete nonsense from beginning to end. But even within their confines of that nonsense, even within their lore, it still doesn't make sense. So Jerusalem did not fall in 607 BCE. It fell 20 years later. We know that as an objective fact because we have um, cuneiform tablets that prove that. And I've talked about this on my channel a billion times before. So go take a look. I actually did a collab with Digital Hammurabi and they talk all about it because they are both, both of the people who run that channel are scholars in the field for that time period in history. So it fell 20 years later in 586 slash 587 BCE, not 607. But if you did start counting at 607, and you counted 2,520 years, which is that magic number that Jehovah's Witnesses pulled out of their asses, it puts you at 1914. So then they made this claim that anybody who was uh, alive, baptized, and anointed at that time in 1914, anybody alive during that time who was an anointed and baptized would never die, or that generation wouldn't die out. That's what they say. That generation who was anointed during 1914's events will not die out. The end, Armageddon, will come before the entire generation dies out. Well, guess what? It's 2020 now, and we're still here. That's 106 years later. You have to be a bare minimum of like eight years old to be baptized. Nobody I have ever heard of in my entire life has been quote-unquote anointed, as Jehovah's Witnesses call it, before, say, 25 years old. Let's just be super extra generous here, and we'll say there was somebody who was anointed and baptized in 1914 at 12 years old. That's not the case, but let's just say it, just to be extra generous. So if they were 12 years old in 1913, the year before, when they were anointed, that would mean that they were born in 1901. So that means it's been 119 years. Nobody is alive today who was 12 years old in 1914 and Jehovah's Witness. That's just factually not the case, right? So how do Jehovah's Witnesses explain this? Because they've been preaching that for like decades and decades, like a century now. Anybody who was alive during 1914 and anointed and baptized... They would not all die out. That entire generation wouldn't die out. So what they did was they came up with the second generation teaching, which is what the caller was talking about here. The second generation teaching basically says anybody who was alive during the lifetime of anybody who was alive during 1914's events still counts as that generation pretty much. It's a really convoluted, complicated, confusing mess. But the long story short is Jehovah's Witnesses have about 25 more years before they have to modify their belief system again and change the second generation teaching again. Um, it, it basically is an end times prediction. So they've basically said the end is going to come before the 1914 generation dies out. Now, they have artificially extended that by saying anybody who is alive during the lifetimes of the people who were alive during 1914's events are part of that generation. But um, ultimately, you're just delaying the inevitable. You're going to have to change your belief system because it's just not going to happen. Armageddon is not coming, and it's not coming in the next 25 years. I know that that's kind of a conf confusing thing like explanation but it's genuinely a confusing claim that they make there's really not any clearer a way to explain it than that 